Hi everybody, my name is Alyssa Allier and I'm the digital archivist at the Kentucky Historical Society. And today we're gonna to talk about how to access our digital collections. So to access our digital collections, you are wanting to go to www.kyhistory.com. And this is where we have all of our digitized archival material. Here in our digital collections, you can see that we divide our material up by different collections. And some of them are by type. So handwritten things you'll find in the manuscripts collection, things that are printed, of course, you'll find in the printed materials collection, and things like photos or postcards or art will be in the graphic materials collection. Um, but some of our other collections are more specific. Uh, they're divided by creator or collection or topic. And so we're gonna explore one of those today. Uh, we're gonna look at the Community Memories Project. We're gonna click on it here. The Community Memories Project was an initiative in 1995 to collect photographs and oral histories uh, related to African-American life in Frankfurt. And so you'll open this button, you click Browse, and this pulls up all of the photographs in this collection. There's a couple ways you can explore. So you can click on each individual photo. For example, we can click on uh, this one. That's the Clinton Street High School class of 1909. And you'll see we have the photo here. You can make it bigger, you can zoom in in different things. And then you can scroll to the bottom and you can see some more information, um, some description. And then here we have subject terms. And uh, anything that's highlighted in blue is a link that you can click on to explore more. So for example, if we wanted to learn more about students like yourselves, uh, you could click on the subject that says students. And that's gonna show you every photograph in this collection that is related to students or education. Another way you can uh, look at information in these collections is by browsing using the sidebars. Here we have a sidebar for those different collections. We have a sidebar by date. So you can use this if you're interested in a specific period like the 1950s or a specific event that happened in a year. You can click on these dates and it'll sort the results for you uh, just like that. And finally, you can also browse by those subjects. So you can uh, do them in the individual description or you can do them in the sidebar. Uh, and finally, there's one more way you can search and that's to use the search bar up here. If you have a specific search term that relates to your research interests or a specific name or a location, it will search just like Google. So we'll type in the term high school and we'll see everything that has the term high school in the title or the description. These are just some of the ways that you can explore our digital collections. We hope that you find something interesting uh, here at the Kentucky Historical Society. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dina Thomas. I'm the archivist at the Kentucky Historical Society. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to access our oral history interviews from past award. From our catalogs and research tools page, on the Kentucky Historical Society's website. Get to oral history interviews by going to Pass the Word, which is here on the website. And when you go to Pass the Word, you would just search Civil Rights Movement. Here you will find any oral history interview that mentions the Civil Rights Movement in Kentucky. To find the ones that are specific to the Kentucky Historical Society, you'll have to click the collection itself. I'm gonna to go to the first search result, which is the Civil Rights Movement in Kentucky Oral History Project. You can tell that this project is a Kentucky Historical Society project because once you look at the description for the collection, our logo will be on the side of it. From this page, you can go to any oral history interview we have in this collection. If you click, say, the Abby Marlette interview, you click the get it here, and it will take you to the actual interview both the audio and the transcript, if the collection has a transcript. Also from our catalogs and research tools webpage, you can find our library catalog. The library catalog is where you will search for books, manuscripts, photographs, and other material that are accessible from our library. If you wanna search for books or archival material, such as um, letters or photographs that also talk about the civil rights movement in Kentucky, you would search by title on, within our library catalog, civil rights movement in Kentucky. On this page, you will find both library materials such as books and pamphlets, and also archival material. For archival material only, you will want to select in the format section, archival material. Once you have found a, um, a collection or a book that you're interested in looking at, you will need to come to the Kentucky Historical Society to view that item. If you don't find what you're looking for online, you can visit the Kentucky Historical Society Wednesday through Saturday from 10 to 5 
and somebody on staff will be happy to help you. My name is Hannah Monken. I'm the Registrar at the Kentucky Historical Society, and we are going to be talking about how to search objects in our online collection. So our object catalog contains objects that are three-dimensional as well as some archival material that is better suited for exhibit instead of display. We will come to this page. The default is a keyword search. So anything you type in, it's going to search all the fields we have available for that search. I recommend this type of search if you're not quite sure what you're looking for and you just kind of want to explore. So we're going to search the topic. Women's race. I'm going to open up a new page and you'll see we have over 1700 results. We don't have that many things related to women's rights. So if you want to be really specific, you can add quotation marks around what you are looking for and see that narrows it down to 48. If you don't use quotation marks, usually the first few results are still going to be the most related to what you're searching for. I'm going to click on this record here and each record is going to have information such as we're going to have the maker name, the date it was used, types of material, and the description is going to be literally, this is what it looks like. The notes section here is going to be if we have historical information about the object. That's going to be maybe what you're looking for if you're wanting to include it in a research paper or a project or anything like that. Anytime you see green text here, that's actually a link that you can click on that will lead you to more results tied to whatever that link is. So for instance, if you would click on Nell's name, who is the person who owned this suit, it's going to take you to all the records we have associated with that person. So we see we have three things. We also can search by different search terms. We search by women's rights, but you can see we also have this tag women's issues. So maybe that will bring up more results than just women's rights did. I see it brings up more things that might not have come up under that initial search that could prove useful. We have this quilt that, as you can see, is not tagged with women's rights. For the keyword search, you can search by things such as topics, people, events, even materials. We're going to do a search for a thing or a picket sign. You see, we have all those results that come up. I right click on this one here. See, this comes from 2017. We do collect up through present day and we do add records uh, very consistently. So always feel free to check back to see what new things we've added. You can see this one has a pretty substantial note section, but a lot of our records don't have that information. We're constantly researching, adding more information, even improving our tags. So there's definitely could be more that you could find every time you do a search. We also do have the advanced search. I would only recommend using if you're very certain of what you're looking for. You can search by things like material. So for instance, if you want to know everything in our collection that involves metal that's tagged as such, we have almost 3,000 objects. Several objects in our collection are on display in the three buildings we have here in Frankfurt, but we do have thousands of objects and we regularly switch them out. So feel free to keep coming back and checking us out Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5.